Hello, hello, Tyler Bryden here. Hope everything's going well. Uh, today I want to talk about Bloom. And this is a very exciting. It is the world's largest open multilingual language model. And just to set the stage a little bit for this, there are some companies right now who are building large language models and they're basically scraping the vast uh, web of all human gener generated text across the internet. And then they're enabling um, you to interact with the model that they've built. And the company's doing that. Uh, Famously, our uh, OpenAI, uh, uh, Cohere, um, uh, Google has sort of their own model of this. I'm guessing Amazon, and Microsoft are working towards this. And what the sort of challenge here is that these models are very expensive to train. There's a great article uh, uh, here by TechCrunch on this. is It's very expensive, million dollar plus to uh, to train um, these large language models. And then generally they are then um, uh, held by uh, private companies uh, with private incentives. And then that limits the access uh, that... Um, that uh, people can have to them. And it can be very costly if you look at um, tapping into the OpenAI uh, um, uh, GPT-3 uh, API. It's expensive. Um, they're trying to figure out how to price DALI right now. I'm sure that it will be somewhat uh, expensive. And really all this does is create um, a little bit of uh, sort of conflict in the actual training of the model, the language that it's trained on, the goals of the model and, and the output that it has. And then the, again, the sort of responsibility, the ethics uh, that are built into these foundational language models, which are uh, just early in their impact on the world uh, today. This will continue to grow. Um, there's more and more work going into these. And, and, and so even on this example, um, Bloom, which was an initiative, a joint initiative by Hugging Face, Gensai, Idris, uh, they came together sort of understanding this sort of larger context, the need to make these large language models more accessible, knowing the cost. They used $7 million of public funds and grants to make this uh, model actually come together. And, uh, and and then released it in an open source manner so that researchers could they could uh, they could download it they could run it they can study it and it's then accessible right on Hugging Face and there's even a, a hosted inference API here um, so that if you don't have the access to large servers and and computing uh, that you can actually interact with the system here so this is a huge. Uh, Sort of release and announcements. I'm really uh, announcements. I'm really interested to see how this impacts companies like OpenAI, Cohere, both from uh, a business perspective and then also I think just a perception perspective, uh, which is um, you know these are private institutions with with you know investment with um, uh, goals to return that investment and then the the impact that has on the decisions that are made in the and the and the sort of how the business model is structured. Whereas this uh, is a much more sort of open science approach and allowing you to uh, interact with the system, understand it better, and uh, and I think we're going to see a lot of innovation uh, come out of it. The other thing that really stuck out to me, which I think is fantastic, is that it was uh, trained on many different languages. So 46, uh, I believe, yeah, 46 languages. There is a full printout in uh, in on this thread here, which is awesome to see. Uh, all the different, I don't, you know, there are some questions. Why not Dutch? Where's the German? Uh, but then some other people excited about Tamil and, you know, some more underserved languages uh, traditionally that are actually available in this model, uh, which then allow you to generate text in that language, which is very exciting. And we're seeing a push towards, you know, Facebook released, you know, 200 uh, plus language, um, automatic sort of translation and understanding. There, there's more and more work being done to serve underserved languages that were not necessarily available in these models and then are not necessarily part of these more private uh, models. So there is something uh, really exciting about this. It's uh, a massive uh, uh, language model, 176 billion parameters, which puts it at the, at the size of uh, sort of this GPT uh, model um, that it, that uh, OpenAI has released. And uh, overall, like a lot of work went into this. A year, a thousand volunteer researchers, ethicists, philosophers, legal scholars all came together to put this um uh, sort of bring this to life and this is where it's actually gone live here uh, now which is really exciting and then looking at yeah like open AI deep mind um, and then look wor working across these uh, multiple languages so the other part that was really fascinating to me that stuck out um, is 
basically this idea of responsible AI being one of them. So building ethics and thinking of the consequences of this. And there are, have been a lot of challenges uh, with large language models because of the data that it pulls off the web and you know the toxic uh, you know the hate the the all the bad things that are part of the internet that also makes all, all can, you know compared to all the good things on the internet are all pulled into these models and so then you need to think of if I'm generating text uh, you know what what are the possible outputs of that and so private companies are trying to understand how to deal with that. And then uh, it seems like there was a much more intentional approach um, just because of the sort of fundamental collaboration um, over Bloom here that has made it come from a more, a little bit more of an ethical uh, approach. It's really cool here. You can see the languages that are, are, uh, are, are included. And, uh, and so there's this idea of like, what can you use it? Like, what can you use it for direct use? And then what are, what is misuse and what is out of scope use? And then what is misuse? Uh, so these are things that are really, uh, in, you know, important. I'm having experience with GPT-3 with, um, DALI right now and have noticed sort of even very hard stops and the keywords that they let you use, um, to generate images, for example, with DALI. And I think, uh, Hugging Face and, you know, everyone who is part of this will continue to monitor and figure out how are people using this what are they studying what are the possible outputs that could be dangerous for the world dangerous for uh humanity and i think overall this is an important um, part of of this work which is we've almost un, you know opened up a pandora's box and what does this mean for for us as people who are uh, impacted by this with the consequences of you know multilingual language generation across the entire internet at speeds that humans are not capable of. These are uh, huge consequences to this if done, uh, not done right. So some really interesting things here about the intended users. Um, so there is, you know, almost anyone uh, can access this. There was one other part that I wanted to touch on, which I thought was really interesting and I think is really worthwhile is the environmental impact of it. So the training uh, supercomputer they use, Gene Zay, I think I have this website open, but I'll open it again, just as a, yeah. Uh, the supercomputer here uh, was used. And again, this took a, a long time to train. I forget exactly the length, but several months to train this after a year plus of work. And uh, yeah, start, okay, there we go. Started uh, March, ended July. So this is um, you know, very recent that this has come to life and that is now published. But then they're sort of measuring using mostly nuclear energy, the heat is generated, and then estimated carbon emissions, and then estimated electricity usage. And I think this is something that we're going to see more of, um, both from a sort of responsible AI, as we look at sort of the carbon impact of training these models. And then I just think generally, it's a good trend to have as we monitor and understand the impact on the environment that we have as we're building these, uh, you know, large language models and just technology in general. And as everything moves towards AI, machine learning, um, there's a lot of things that are really valuable. There's a lot of things that are uh, not necessarily valuable. And all of those are consuming energy, vast amounts of energy. And that is something um, for us to um, consider there. So I'll go back to the original um, sort of announcement to write on uh, sort of the huggingface.co big science uh, uh, subdomain. And what I also like and am excited about is that this is only the beginning. And so first of all, I love the name, Bloom, wonderful. Uh, one of my uh, good song that I listen to uh, sort of like a morning meditations uh, song is called Bloom. So I enjoy that. And I think this is really exciting is that um, Hugging Face has been very collaborative with the develop development community. And this is not just like a one-time model um, that is going to sit there static. It's the seed of a living family of models that, tend in, that, that we intend to grow. Uh, and then the community will be able to support that. You'll be able to see where positive things are happening. They'll be able to see where negative things are happening and then use all that information to make this model more powerful, uh, more safe. Uh, and those are things that I'm, um, you know, grateful to see that there are organizations working on. And uh, again, there could still be lots of uh, problems that come from this, but overall, it seems generally the intentions are, are really good. Yeah, you can see the final run of 117 uh, days there. So the other part, I, I think, you know, I touched on a couple parts here, which were how large it is in comparison to open AI models, DeepMind, et cetera, et cetera, the natural languages, and then the programming languages that are included, the fact that it's available to download, run, and study, which I have the link here will be included in the resources, sort of this idea of the responsible AI um, uh, vision that they have and the intention and then the environmental impact uh, sort of statistics that they're doing, and then just this continued um, 
improvements with community involvement, which I think is, is, is fantastic. And the interest in this stuff is as it comes to life, as it becomes more practical is at an all time high. And again, sort of the early stage, almost, I feel like we're in the, the sort of cave people, uh, fire sparks, uh, and maybe we've just got a very, very small fire. Uh, that's where it sort of seems we are in this space. And this is just getting started. And now, um, open source versions, open access versions of this are going to accelerate that even further, just like mini Dally has uh, crayon now, just as, um, uh, uh, GPT three has just as Dally has. Um, and it's great to see different organizations coming from different sort of uh, sort of um, vehicles, nonprofit, um, open source, private, all sort of culminate towards this common goal of these large language models is understanding of human language of intelligence and then incredible classification and, and generation um, that is possible. One thing I would say, I, I would love to see, and I think this will come, it sounds like this uh, bloom is not necessarily made for image generation, it's made for text generation, but a lot of the practices that are uh, available or there and the team that they have seems very capable of building in this image generation version. So I expect at some point we will see a high resolution version, uh, high resolution image generator um, sort of rivaling DALI created in sort of the same model that Bloom has. So that's sort of, I guess, a small prediction there. There's probably many things that I have glossed over possibly even gotten wrong uh, uh, during this video. So if, if uh, you feel that way, please encourage to send, uh, encourage you to send me a message. I would love to learn. I'm digesting this information as it comes, but thought this was really exciting for anyone who's interested in natural language processing and AI and technology and nonprofits and open source, all this wonderful stuff sort of culminating together uh, with a bunch of amazing organizations and talented people trying to do their best to figure out how to... Uh, to bring this to life in a responsible way. So this has been a video on uh, Bloom, uh, the world's largest open source, uh, open access, multilingual language model. Man, that's a little bit of a mouthful, but the final name is good. And uh, I love the use of the emoji uh, here on, on the end. If you like this stuff, uh, please feel encouraged to send me a message, send me a like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. I have so much fun covering this stuff and now I'm learning from people who are commenting and sending me messages. So overall, really grateful uh, to spend a couple minutes each day delving into these topics, learning myself and then learning from you and hopefully we're all learning together. So thank you very much. This has been Tyler Bryden. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.